Hello and welcome to Experience Church. I'm Dennis Cummins, the lead pastor here. And today we have a special guest, Mark Melosha with the Family Policy Institute. And we're going to be talking and addressing some issues that are facing uh, us today here in Washington State and uh, how, how the importance uh, is before us to be able to stand for biblical values, biblical truths. And so, Mark, I want to say thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being with us here at Experience Church. Uh, we've got some things to talk about. Yes, uh, very much glad to be here. It's always exciting to, uh, to see what your church is doing and, and the energy and passion that it displays each and every Sunday. Oh, amen. Well, Mark, there's uh, something that we hold uh, true that we're really, we're calling them the high five principles. Um, and it's kind of a siren call out to other pastors and other churches um, to be bold and be brave. And, and those five things are, first of all, we, we honor biblical marriage between one man and one woman. Mm-hmm. Secondly, we honor biblical gender and sexuality. We honor the right to life. We honor the rule of law with responsible policing. Mm-hmm. And we honor that we are all created equal. We have all come from Adam, one blood. Mm-hmm. And so with those five pivotal things, I'm amazed how people are so intimidated to be able to stand for what the Bible is truly telling us, those five uh, moral issues that we need to stand for. And uh, you just mentioned something about Liz Cheney and, and, and a statement that she's just made. Tell us a little bit about that. As you know, Liz Cheney has been uh, in, in the news here a while for some of the decisions she's made, breaking away from a Republican Party and what used to be uh, standard establishment conservatism. And she's somewhat radicalized uh, herself. Uh, then um, I was just reading uh, or listening to Albert Moeller this morning, and I heard that she made an announcement repenting for her viewpoints on gay marriage hmm. um, as uh, she took a courageous stand um, a few years back when her uh, sister um, got married to a, another woman. And so she kept to her Christian viewpoints and defended Christian marriage. Unfortunately, uh, today we learned that she did what Obama did, President Obama did, when he was president, he evolved. She actually uh, repented to her previous positions on on the sanctity of marriage, mm. marriage between one man and one woman. And uh, she came and announced that she was wrong and, and repented from her previous decision. It was a little bit unexpected, a prominent you know, um, establishment uh, Republican, you know, changing their view views in a very public uh, she did it on, I can't remember what um, what news media, 60 Minutes or something, uh, but she re- changed her position out loud. But that's the fight we're seeing um, yeah. in the Republican Party, in the churches, mm-hmm. in all of our society, of people picking one side or another in this fight between God and, and between good and evil, between sin and virtue. And unfortunately, sadly, She's done what a lot of folks have done, mm-hmm. and um, and this is what Christians need to be aware of and realize we have a, a big job ahead of us. Yeah. Um, how are we going to stop this? These these folks, these individuals who were good uh, to following Scripture, the teachings of Jesus Christ, and now they're moving to the other side. So it was a sad day for America, a sad day for the Re- Republican Party, and a sad day for Liz Cheney. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, it's interesting. Uh, obviously, we live in a free nation where, you know, consenting adults can live and, and, and choose and, and do what they want, right? Um, if two people of the same sex choose to do things on their own, um, that's not what we're talking about, uh, even though we wouldn't agree with, with that kind of a lifestyle. It's still free choice. But what what we're talking about here is the redefining of the nuclear family and what creates life, what God established is biblical marriage between one man and one woman. And so what what shocks me is how churches have become so intimidated to even talk about biblical marriage and stand for biblical marriage or even say it from the pulpit between one man and one woman. Why, why do you think that is? Well, uh, a sad thing, um, we, we've been in a, a you know, 4,000 year fight ever since the early uh, Jewish prophets, you know, against the devil. Let, yeah. Let's be real clear. Ultimately, this fight is against powers and principalities, not of this earth. Yeah. And, um, and we can't win this fight all by ourselves. We can't win this fight with science or, or strength 
or, or wisdom or reason. Mm -hmm. We need something a little bit more, and that's the teachings of Jesus Christ. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, our country was founded on these principles and is what made our country the, the exceptional, the, the, the shining light for all nations. Unfortunately, we're turning our way from God as a nation yeah. and taking positions contrary uh, to what, it, what, what is actually true and just mm -hmm. and will make all of us prosperous as individuals, as families, and as yeah. a society. And, and we don't have people speaking up. Albert Moeller sp spoke up against uh, Liz Cheney's decision. I wonder how many Republicans will speak up against her decision. Right. I wonder how many pass other pastors will speak up and say, especially when she use our own language, religious yes. Christianity, <laughs> right. to defend her switch of abandoning scripture. Right. That's a big deal. There's a lot of folks on the other side cheering her decision mm -hmm. and going to make her into a saint for right. their cause. But unfortunately, I think it's a sad uh, state of affairs when, when she does this, she thinks she's doing the right thing and thinks, frankly, she, politically she can get away with it. Yeah. So it's sad that we don't have the courage and, and that we're losing too many folks like this, our children, mm -hmm. our neighbors, Liz Cheney. Yeah, well, you know, uh, it seems like popularity is is what affirms what's correct or not you know if it's popular then it's correct if it's not popular if you're if you're in the silent majority then uh, be careful because you'll get doxxed you'll get canceled and so or you'll get threatened Antifa will show up at, at your doorstep um, it, it's amazing the vitriol and the hate that comes from our ability to have free speech and um, you know it goes back to when Paul told Timothy be instant in season, and out of season, and a lot of people don't realize that, hey, the gospel of Jesus Christ, what the true word of God is not in season today. It's not palatable today, but that doesn't mean that we change. It doesn't, doesn't mean, because if we change, it'll never come back into season. And so we have this responsibility to protect the nuclear family. And the interesting thing is, uh, from what I've seen in, in the studies, the majority of uh, the homosexual community uh, really weren't for trying to get gay marriage. Um, it was more the activists that were after that because we know the activists will never be satisfied because now we have the LGBTQ uh, community uh, and they're pushing agendas now in, in the sex ed, as, as we've seen. So, so this is a slippery slope that has no end. Well, you're absolutely right. I can talk from personal experience about this. I was, yes. a, as you know, a Democrat state representative. I first ran in 1992 which is, seems, uh, seems like that was a century ago in the way our country has changed. And I finally won as a, a state representative in 98. But back then, uh, I would put the gay activists, the LGBTQ movement back then, in three categories. There was those folks who just wanted to be left alone. Right. They wanted to do their thing, you know, in the privacy of their own home, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there was a group who just wanted basic rights, you know, which... Yeah, we can have that good conversation about what basic rights, how are we unjustly harming folks who engage in uh, same-sex behavior. And then there were the radicals, what I call the worst third. Mm -hmm. uh, and they became in power within the gay rights movement, then within uh, uh, the Democratic Party, and now within society. And you see this radicalism not just with that movement, but with Literally every moment. Look at first wave feminism versus now we're what? Fourth wave crazy <laughs> feminism? Yeah. The first wave, I think 90% of Christians would absolutely agree with. We need to give rights, basic rights to women. Yes. They're being treated unjustly in, in our society. Absolutely. And that started out, you know, Christians were heavily involved in that movement in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But then it got taken over by the, in the, by the radicals in 1969. And they changed. Yeah. And uh, so... Again, um, we can if we if good people, people of good will, of any faith, of any morality, but just wanting to do the right thing, get together. We can solve all these problems. We were solving the problems of how to deal with folks that are with same-sex attraction and doing it in a just manner. Just like we, our America, finally figured out how to deal with race. We had a horrible legacy with slavery, with Jim Crow, but with with the help of Amen. Reverend Martin Luther King, yes. bringing a Christian perspective to this problem. He changed our nation for the better. Yeah. But now the radicals, just like in that movement, have gotten hold. Mm -hmm. You know, the black power people from the early 60s, which fought Martin Luther King, Reverend yeah. Martin Luther King, uh, now they become a powerful. Right. They run the movement, and now they're moving back to 
racism again. Mm -hmm. So all these movements tend to get corrupt. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, we're seeing this right now. All these movements, the environmental movement, uh, 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 all these other movements, or uh, the Marxists, mm -hmm. it used to be all oh, socialists. You know, we just need to dis do this thing to adjust Social Security or, or, or how, how, how government should be run. But now they're all the radicals you see have taken over. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of liken this unto the Titanic, ta Titanic when it uh, struck the iceberg. Um, you still had people on top deck and mm -hmm. their minks and their stoles and walking around and everything's n nice. And, and the captain of the ship says, it's, it's going to sink. It may not look like it, but it has breached the first bulkhead and there's nothing to stop the water that is going to come in. And everybody on top side is like, that's impossible. This is unsinkable. And I think there's a lot of people in the Christian circles that are in denial. They're in denial of how dangerous uh, our situation is and how precarious we are, um, uh, the, the environment that we're in is just ridiculous. And people don't see it. Absolutely right. You know, our country has hit the great analogy, has hit the iceberg, it's going down. And some folks are still. Uh, playing on the band, rearranging the deck chairs, yes. and um, and they don't see that we're sinking 10 feet per year, and soon we'll all be underwater. And um, and that's the story of our nation. President John Adams, a quote I like uh, uh, saying all the time, uh, state, and uh, he wasn't the only one. Madison said that all our early founders of our country, he said that our nation, our, our, uh, our constitution can only concede with a moral, religious people. It is wholly inadequate for any other. Yes. So our country, our constitution, it only works if we're moral or religious. Right. And now we've seen Bill banding any sort of morality, mm -hmm. any sort of religious viewpoint, worldview. Yep. And we've accepted what? Nihilism, power, feelings, yeah. this neo-paganism, which, which really destroys all the foundations, the bedrock of any functioning society, mm -hmm. the right to life, yeah. family, yeah. marriage, children, religious freedom, and, and how to have a just criminal justice system, yeah. funding the police, law and order. We all know that you know, the, any, the market, any civilization has a, has a need a functioning uh, judicial branch and functioning police. Mm -hmm. If they're corrupt, if they've abandoned any sort of morality or integrity, uh, a society can't survive. That's right. And now we're seeing our police being corrupted right now by these, frankly, evildoers who right now who are running, trying to legalize literally every vice or crime imaginable. Yep. And you have many people, and what's worse, many Republican leaders silent on all this. Yes. They're just not even looking around. Yep. Liz Cheney is just one example of somebody who's just ignoring the plight happening in America. Mm -hmm. But you look at a lot of Republican leaders that are doing this. Well, we're going to change that. The Family yes. Policy Institute is trying to recruit pastors like you willing to engage publicly yeah. with the teachings of Jesus Christ and, 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 and take that, those blinders away from them you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and make them see the evil, see the disaster yeah. that's looming uh, uh, very near to us. Well, you, you've actually had some good success uh, just recently in Spokane. You had a, a pastor's summit, pastor's roundtable. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 I've changed the organization slightly. We realized one organization centered in Linwood can't organize the entire state, motivate yeah. the entire state, educate the entire So we're setting up these regional Christian centers, FPIW, where we have volunteers and pastors help organize, localize, motivate, and educate, and, and, and help energize the local community. Uh, we believe that, that we need a grassroots, you know, uh, type church awakening happening. That's right. And so we're we, we working with pastors there, and we're uh, we are going to be hiring somebody there um, literally next week and, and and start this. And we plan nine other places here uh, to do this in, in, uh, in our state. And this goal is, again, to bring pastors and, and leaders and opinion makers and Christians to get out there and implement the Great Commission locally. Yep. And if they do that and change hearts and minds, then we will have that moral or, or religious uh, leaders that will justly um, run our country. Absolutely. Now, uh, how many pastors did you have attend in Western, uh, Eastern Washington? Uh, the, uh, at the first meeting, we had 10 pastors. Yeah. And uh, we have a list of about 100, so we'll be busy recruiting all of them, mm -hmm. Catholics, 
uh, Baptists, non-denominationals, yep. all are welcome to this because at the end of the day, all of us are unified on scripture, yes. on those basic values yeah. of life and family. Yeah. And, and, and the question is, can we find enough of those faithful yeah. Christian pastors who will lead? And if I could just read you what yes. I read to my uh, group, a, f- a great quote by Charles Finney, Finney uh, Reverend Charles Finney in 1870, he died in 1875. Um, but he, he, he talked about the current plight that we're having back then and, and you know, 200 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, he, and of course, there are a lot of immorality and evil running rampant, you know, in, in the post-Civil War America. Yeah. But, he, but he says and talked about immorality, he says, if Im- immorality prevails in the land, the fault is ours. He's speaking as a pastor. In a great degree, if there is this decay of conscience, the pulpit is responsible for it. If the public press lacks moral discrimination, Boy, look at our public press. Yeah. Uh, the pulpit is responsible for it. If church is degenerate and worldly, the pulpit is responsible for it. If the world loses its interest in religion, the pulpit is responsible for it. Brethren, our preachings will bear its legitimate fruits. If Satan rules in our halls of legislature, like Olympia, yeah. the pulpit is responsible for it. Mm-hmm. If our politics become so corrupt that the very foundation of our government are ready to fall away, the pulpit is responsible for it. Let us not ignore this fact, my dear brethren, but let us lay to the heart and be thoroughly wake to our responsibility to respect the morals of this nation. He's almost like he's talking about today yes. in America, in Washington. So the key is pastors like you who will go out and be the shepherds that the people desire the folks are looking for Christian leadership in our nation. Yep. I know Republican legislators are looking for Christian leadership. Yes. Yes. But they need courage. They need faith. Yep. They need to hear the words of Jesus Christ. Yes. So these regional centers will start locally, and we hope an explosion of waking happens all across the state. Amen. You know, if you're watching right now, uh, I, I want to challenge you. If you're a part of a church, ask your pastor, ask your leadership, the eldership, where they stand on these high five values you know where do they stand on marriage is it biblical marriage or are they just kind of well you know it, we have to progress with this with the day uh, you know where do they stand on the the gender and the sexuality where do they stand on the right to life and the rule of law and and equality for all that we are all made equal in the eyes of god um because we we have legislators out there that are standing I mean, I can think of Senator Chris Gildon, Representative Kelly Chambers, Representative Jesse Young, uh, Representative Cindy Jacobson, uh, Councilwoman Amy Kruver. I mean, these are people that are standing for truth, and I know there's more. You have stars here. There's no doubt about it, and they need our help. They need our prayers, our help, our support. And I've seen stars like these folks falter because pastors and Christians stayed away, Mm -hmm. didn't pray for them, they didn't support them, they didn't become part of a faith community with them. Yes. And so that's our responsibility and the responsibility of all pastors. Yep. When that sheep wanders away, we're supposed to leave the 99 and go after them. We've seemed to have forgotten that. Yep. Now we've lost 40 of them. And so it's time for us to really live those words that Jesus Christ preached. That's right. And, um, and we can do that. And I'm, I'm confident that we can get a lot more Republicans and conservatives out there yep. who realize they do have to proclaim and not be embarrassed by the teachings of Jesus Christ out in the public square. That's right. If we do that, we won't be losing folks to the yeah. other side. We'll be converting them yeah. to the words, by the words of Jesus Christ. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, I was talking, I was invited to speak at uh, a political arena, and uh, I was talking about the, these five things, and I said, really, uh, it, was a, it was a Republican event. I said, really, I'm speaking about the platform that the Republican Party stands on. Now, I identify as a biblical conservative, and that's, what, that's how I vote with, with those things. But in the reality is, is Dem- Democrat, the, 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 the planks that the Democrats stand on do not line up with biblical conservatism. It's progressive. And so uh, this is where we have to be bold as pastors. And so I want to say thank you. Thank you for, for having the vision to step out into our state and reach out to other pastors, and they can get a hold of you how? Um, go to fpiw.org. 
um, and sign up for news and alerts. Or uh, my email is up there. Uh, uh, we send out news and alerts, you know, two or three times a week. I'd um, love to hear from pastors. I'd love to come to your church and speak yes. like I did at your church yeah. and, um, and, and get our message. Um, I, I, I see pastors waking up and wanting to be involved and really wanting to go live the Great Commission. And that's the only answer to our troubles today. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you for being on. And everybody, don't forget, like, subscribe, share this out. Uh, we are on all media platforms. And so we so appreciate your support. And let's get the word out. God bless you.